alternative frequencies, the show that brings you what the other side has to say. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for tuning in to this week's edition of Alternative Frequencies, the Supernatural in Your Living Room. I'm your host, Stephen Hill, electronic medium, DJ of the dead, and creepy voice on your radio. I'd like to give a big shout out to all my friends in the chat room, and of course, uh, the Hey Z Radio Network for hosting us this evening, as well as Birmingham City Radio UK. So happy to be with you this evening. If you'd like to join us in the chat room, just go to hazyradio.com, click on the On Air Chat button, and you can join all the other alternative freaks right here in the chat room. Have you ever wondered what your pet might have to say to you if he or she could talk? Well, my guest this evening, psychic medium Coriel Kramer, specializes in animal communication. She's also a Reiki master, and she'll be joining us to take your calls to connect with your pets, both past and present. Well, those of you who follow me on Facebook probably know that I'm trying to give up my smoking habit. Well, I'm not trying. I've given it up. Cold turkey. Um, Day five now with no smokes. I'm taking it rather well. Don't know if uh, all those around me (laughs) feel the same, but uh, I'm, I am feeling better, and I'm glad I decided to quit, but God, I loved my cigarettes, but that's in the past. On the first segment of the show, I want to share some uh, Spirit Radio files with you, and then we're going to have Corey L. Kramer on, and I'm going to go ahead and load those files, and while I do, we'll get the disclaimer out of the way. So please, stick around. If you'd like to find out more about Something Unseen, you can do so by visiting Amazon. Check out the true story of my haunting, Something Unseen. The views and opinions expressed on this network do not reflect anyone here. Thank goodness, because there's a reason we're all on radio instead of TV. Therefore, we shall not be responsible for any personal injury, property damage, accident, delay, world wars, sudden appearance of unwanted nose hairs or blemishes, collapse of the World Bank, freak accidents, delays, or inconvenience, or more importantly, being out of chocolate fudge ripple ice cream at Ben & Jerry's. Hey, Columbus! We take responsibility for nothing. We know nothing and will admit to nothing. You're listening to Alternative Frequencies with host Stephen Hill. Now back to the show. As I mentioned before the break, I wanted to share a couple of ghost radio communication files and in doing so, giving spirit a voice. The first one has to do with uh, my guest tonight, Corey L. Kramer, who is a Reiki master. And I would like to share this file, um, and it causes me to wonder, is Reiki an energy? Is Reiki a person? Is Reiki a spirit? I'll let you decide. Type in the chat room what you think, but here's the file. Lady that said to me, what's your name? Reiki. Lady that said to me, what's your name? Right here. Well, I hope you could hear as clearly as I hear when I asked the name of the woman who had spoken the file. The name I clearly heard was Reiki. 
So perhaps uh, Reiki is all of the above. Here's a file once more. A lady that said to me, what's your name? Reiki. For those of you who have read the true story of my haunting, Something Unseen, you'll know that I write about the dead comedians and these are spirits that come through on electronic voice phenomena occasionally, but more often on the spirit radio communication sessions. And, and just like uh, they probably did in this life, they like to make snide comments and uh, make light of situations. So here's one such file, um, and to set this up for you, I was asked uh, by many people, Steve, why don't you do readings using your spirit radios? Well, if I was sitting in your kitchen, I'm pretty sure I could talk to your relatives but if, and friends that are past, but if I'm sitting here and you're sitting in another state, I'm not so sure. But here's what the other side had to say when I asked the question, can I do readings on this, meaning the uh, Joe's box? Can I give people a reading on this? Ten dollars. Ten dollars. Okay. Or just... Ten minutes for... Ten dollars for how long? This unit... I'll play it by. I'm not sure what to make of that file. I just thought it was uh, pretty funny. And she's in reference to my question, can I get readings on this? She immediately answers, $10. And I repeat that. And then she goes on to say, uh, for this unit, and then percent, a percentage. So I'll play it for you again. Uh, not exactly sure what she was saying. We just thought it was a very interesting file. Can I give people a reading on this? Ten dollars. Ten dollars. Okay. Or just ten minutes for ten dollars for how long? I'll play it by. The last file I'm going to share with you this evening is very interesting to me because uh, they're talking about dead. It's the first thing I hear in this clip. And then they talk about buried. <laughs> uh, I don't know if this is uh, relevant to the people that are hanging around my house, my invisible friends, or not. But here's this file. I believe they're trying to keep me talking when I was trying to sign off. Okay. Goodbye. And they're pretty much it. Pretty much. Buried. Buried. Okay. Goodbye. Pretty much. Buried. Buried. Well, I hope you found these interesting, and uh, I play these files, or files like them, every week. Yeah. Goodbye. And they're pretty much. Pretty much. Buried. Buried. We'll be right back with special guest, psychic, medium, animal communicator, Coriel Kramer, right after this quick break, so please stick around. The opinions and views expressed on this program may not necessarily be those of the Hazy Radio Network, Birmingham City Radio Network, its sponsors, affiliates, or those on the other side. You're listening to Alternative Frequencies with host Stephen Hill. Now back to the show. 
And we're back here live. It's my great pleasure, ladies and gentlemen, to introduce to you now a psychic medium, an animal communicator, a Reiki master, Miss Coriel Kramer. Coriel, are you out there? I certainly am. Hey, Steve. How are you doing? Oh, I'm just doing very well t- this evening, and uh, thanks for taking your time to come on and, and talk with us. Uh, you know, I had, you on the, I had you on the show before, and uh, it's been a while, and yeah. since then, some developments have taken place, <laughs> and uh, I had to call sure. on you for your help, uh, and I want to talk about that a little bit first. Um, sure. <laughs> Sure. One morning, uh, just for the listeners out there, Cruiser, my faithful companion here, uh, was jumping up on my bed, and all of a sudden, well, actually, he thinks it's his bed. He just lets me sleep in it. But uh, I had my back to him. I saw him jump out of the corner of my eye, and then I heard him start hollering. And mm-hmm. I couldn't figure out what in the world happened to this poor dog. He was screaming. It's like he fell off the bed backwards, and he's never done that before. Um, so I chase him down the hall. He's hobbling down the hall. Can't hardly walk on his leg, but I can't find anything wrong with it. And being the, um, uh, you know, the conscious pet owner that I am, um, <laughs> I took him straight to the vet. It cost me 200 bucks for them to tell me they can't find anything wrong with him. Although he shakes like a leaf. When you go to touch him, he just shakes and, you know, it's mm. pitiful. So I thought of Coriel. I said, who better to, to contact uh, and see if I can get to the root of Cruiser's problem uh, by mm-hmm. getting uh, a session with Coriel. So I called you. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, I told you I just spent $200 to the bet. Here's what I know that happened. And somehow he's hurt, and I can't find out what's wrong with him. Right. And uh, you told me about uh, of course you connected with cruiser and mm-hmm. you told me about a spirit that you saw around cruiser do you right. re- do you remember that no i i remember it very very well um i was actually i, I had started off just starting to give uh cruiser reiki and through the connection of um also doing the reiki and also doing the animal communication it was the weirdest thing. Um, I got this sense of this, this, um, I guess the best way to describe it is this dark dog that was attached to him. And, you know, I don't like to use the word devil because I don't believe in the devil, but that's me. That's just me. Uh, but it was a, it was a dog that had, uh, it, it, it had this, this, Darkness, I guess, is the best way to describe it. This discordant energy about it. And um, it came through really, really strong. Like somehow or another, through, you know, the work that you do is is so important and it's so tactile. It's so, you know, through the audio files and through the, the scrying and, and, and all that stuff. I mean, you really bring in the spirits um, in a profound and very, very powerful way. And what I got was that somehow or another, through doing the work that you do and Cruiser being so connected to you, and for want of a better way of saying it, he is your familiar, okay, Um, this entity got, like, connected to him. And it, it caused him to fall off the bed. And it wasn't so much the pain of falling off the bed that had messed Cruiser up, it was the fact that this entity was with him and he couldn't, he couldn't release it. He couldn't get rid of it and he couldn't, he was trying to also let you know about it. And of course, you know, I mean, how are you going to know? You got, your dog's got a dark dog attached to him, but it was very, very interesting. I very rarely have had uh, a session like that before. And, you know, of course, being your dog, it's nothing took me by surprise. So. <laughs> Um, but it was it was incredible, and through the connection of doing the Reiki and the animal communication and, and talking to Cruiser and connecting to this dark entity, I then called in my guides that I use um, when I need to clear spaces or I need to help people who have entities attached to them. And I called in my guides, which was at, at the time, I believe it was Archangel Raphael and Archangel Michael, to help me clear this dog and pass him to the light. 
And you were telling me all this stuff that I was doing. Um, I was actually, I had disconnected from you. I wasn't doing it while I was on the phone with you, if I remember correctly. I I sent you an audio file, right? Yes, you did. Correct. Yes. And I said, I think I remember saying in the audio file, I feel like there's been a major, major shift in Cruiser and he's okay. And I remember you either, I think you sent me a a message on Facebook just before I was sending you the audio file, and you said it's like Cruiser's like a different dog. Yes, um, and and that's exactly what you described is is what I felt, too. It's like his energy was just so screwed up, for lack of Mm. a better term, Mm -hmm. that he was in shock. Yeah. Um, And, you know, it was so weird, um, Coriel, when you sent me, the audio file, <laughs> you said, okay, I'm going to send Cruiser some Reiki, and you and you clapped your hands three times. Right. Oh, um, right. And, you know, what was so weird, now, I was listening to this. You sent it to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm playing it back. I'm listening to it. And as soon as you said, I'm sending Cruiser some Reiki, and you clapped your hands three times, right. Cruiser was in the den. I was back here in my office. I swear he let out three sharp yelps. Mm-hmm. And blew my mind. I couldn't believe mm-hmm. it. And that's when I said, Coriel, I was just listening to this. You said, I'm sending Cor- uh, Cruiser some Reiki energy. And you clapped your hands three times, and he yelped three times as if on cue. <laughs> and I can't help but wonder, yeah. uh, you know, yeah. that just seems a little bit too much to be a coincidence. Now, you mentioned uh, <laughs> mentioned the dark dog attached to Cruiser. Um, I know I've sent you some of my animal images because that's what you do is communicate with right. animals. And I'm communicating with them in a way as far as uh, during uh, my water light reflection, ITC experiments or water scrying, uh, mm-hmm. where spirit can and does show up. I call them the ghost in my teapot. And I have the uh, video <laughs> on YouTube by that name. If anybody wants to check yeah. it out. But I do get a lot of canine images, very defined images uh, unmistakably mm-hmm. of, of dogs and why do you think this is can you shed any light on why these things uh appear to me i i think that especially with the animals i mean animals are very profound in our lives okay so, and it's it's it, this is going back you know to the druids and the the celts and even and you know my people who are the native americans and africans and you know i mean animals have always been a very 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 powerful uh entity in our lives and i think it's because animals are they're kind of like children in in that they're pure connected to pure divine energy there's none of that stuff that happens usually when adults get older and we're like is this really working is this not working i don't know what's happening i don't know you know all this doubt comes in children and animals are extremely powerful extremely connected to to energy and i think the animals um for them communication they're open to all different kinds of communication they're telepathic they're uh empathic um, they, of course, speak in their own languages, body languages, but they're also into vibration. So being able to permeate the veil, so to speak, and, and, and materialize in your water scrying is something that's quite easy for, for animal, animals, especially animals who are in spirit. But I think the the dogs that I've seen, and you've sent me quite a few, and I love looking at them, but all the dogs that, that I see that come through, and really all the animals that I've seen that come through so far that you've sent me, um, they have a sweetness about them. They have a gentleness about them. You know, I don't feel any kind of discordant or, you know, uh, malice or anything like that there. But this entity that was attached to Cruiser was much different. It was... Um, there was anger with it. There was a lot of emotion with it. There was a lot of dominance with it. Um, and it was just, it was, it was overpowering cruisers, so to speak. Um, and you know, when that dog pushed him off the bed, it was just more of this, like, I mean, cruiser living with you, he's used to spirits. My animals are, are used to, you know, seeing spirits. For them, it's no big deal. But when the entity is powerful enough to forcibly start maneuvering and pushing and 
and touching you, then it, we're talking a whole different, you know, ball of wax. So I think the animals come through for you so easily because, you know, water is vibration. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's manipulated very, very easy by vibration. You take a tuning fork, you put it next to a glass of water, and you're going to start to see that the water is going to start to vibrate at the same um, rate as the tuning fork. So it's a very easy way for them to just come on in and show themselves to you, I think. I, I love it. I think it's a really awesome way for you to connect. Well, I love um, to get animal images, um, especially dogs, because I am a big, big <laughs> dog fan. And uh, mm-hmm. we do have a caller, Coriel. I knew that someone out there was wanting to call in and have you connect with a pet. So <laughs> let's see who we have on the line. Area code 301. You're live on Alternative Frequencies. Hello, area code 301. Hello. Hello. Yes, hey. there is someone there. Hey. Hey, Stephen, it's Tabby. How are you doing? Hey, Tabby. How are you this evening? No, not bad. How about yourself? I'm just doing fantastic. And uh, we're live here with animal communicator Coriel Kramer. And, and Tabby, um, I know you want to talk to Coriel. <laughs> Hi, Tabby. Hi, how are you? I'm good. What can I do for you? Uh, well, I'm a uh, paranormal investigator as well okay. as a sensitive. Mm-hmm. And it seems that a few times I have brought someone home with me after an investigation. Uh, yeah. And mm-hmm. my cats have a tendency to react to it. And um, how do I let my animals know that what I might bring home with me um, is not going to harm them? I mean, I can tell if something might be nasty to my cats, but how do I reassure them when something is here until I get tell them to leave? I think what would hap- what would help is a, a couple of things, Tabby. <clears throat> First off, before you go out on an investigation, okay, let me explain to you. When I connect to your animals, when I connect to your, your cats, what happens is what, what they're telling me is this. Um, my mom leaves, she comes back, and then all of a sudden there's somebody here. Okay, so I don't know what the heck is going on, where'd she go, what's happening, what's, you know, all of a sudden these spirits are just showing up. So what I would suggest you do is this. Before you go out on an investigation, okay, they don't so much don't like the fact that you're an investigator. It's not that. They they like that you investigate and do the good work that you're doing. It's just that you, you, you get the hitchhikers that, you know, they're not used to all of a sudden coming in. So if you let them know before you go out on an investigation and you tell them, okay, guys, this is the deal. I'm going out on an investigation tonight, and um, I'm going to... Uh, you know, I'm going to uh, be doing this kind of work, so there's a possibility I might bring somebody home. Of course, what I'm going to do is, you know, I'm I'm assuming, Tabby, you shield yourself before and after, correct? Yes, I do. Okay. So um, just let them know that there's a possibility that you might be bringing home a friend, uh, but the friend won't be staying. <laughs> and... Um, and that, you know, if there's anything that they, they want it, they're more than welcome to, if they want to also interact with this, because, you know, animals are very into the spirit, so, you know, sometimes they'll interact. I think it's the suddenness of you leaving, and then all of a sudden they don't know when, they don't know quite when you're going out on an investigation, so all of a sudden it's like mom comes home with hitchhikers. So I think if you just let them know when you go out on the investigation, it's going to really help them know so they can prepare themselves when you get home. Does that make sense? Um, yes, it does, because there was one time um, I had a little boy to follow me home, yeah. unbeknownst to me, and unfortunately this little boy liked to play pranks. Uh, and after a couple mm. of days, he started actually pulling my cat's tails, making them jump straight in the air, yeah. uh, causing yeah. them to jump off the furniture. Yeah. And I yelled at him and told him, you know, look, you can be here for a while, but don't mess with my cats. It's right. not a nice thing to do. Right. After he threw something off my mantelpiece, uh-huh. I finally just let, I threatened the little boy and I said, look, if you don't stop it and leave and go back where you came from, I'm going to find your grandmother and she'll make you leave. 
my cats really didn't know how to react and yeah. a couple of times I know I've I've brought someone home with me for a short period of time and it has really, you know, unnerved them. So Yeah. I I would also because I do investigations myself as well. So I mean I don't mind bringing somebody home sometimes, but I really, my, my home is kind of like my sanctuary for me. So, um, and I know that especially with living with my animals, I want to respect their sanctuary as well. So what I would also get into the habit, I mean, it sounds like you know how to deal with it totally and completely, but what I like to do is, um, when I'm coming home from investigation, I usually have, um, like, um, uh, some kosher salt that I dust my, my shoes with before I, I walk into my house. Um, that kind of like breaks the energy a little bit as well. And I take my shoes off, leave them outside, put the, put some salt down and then lay them in the salt for overnight. Um, and then I also, because we're doing this work, it's really important for you to, you know, cleanse the house. So I would say if you don't already, then get into a habit of cleansing the house either with sound or I use sage personally myself because I like using that. Um, it, invoking archangels, whatever feels comfortable for you. But if you do that, I think your animals will also um, start to, you know, be less, how do I say it? It feels like they're a little bit tense when you walk out the door. You, you get what okay. I'm saying? Oh, most certainly. You're right. Yeah. It, everything makes a lot of sense. I, I really do appreciate that. Thank you. You're absolutely welcome. Well, thanks Thank for you. calling, Tabby. All right. All right. Thank you. Have a good okay. evening. You too. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Well, Coriel, uh, that was very interesting. And they, I've always heard, and I don't know if it's true, maybe you could tell me, um, when you leave, in other words, mm-hmm. when I leave here and leave Cruiser behind, yeah. does he think I'm never coming back? Because I've heard that uh, from a lot of different people. Um, this is my experience, okay? Animals are much smarter than that, Okay. Um, so what I, what I mean by that is this, um, they know, okay, that you're going to come back. Okay. They reason, they, they understand, they're very, very in tune with you. Um, the thing of it is, is this, is that, you know, it's important just like with any relationship. Okay. It's important to keep it active and to let them know what's going on, what's happening. So what I like to tell people is, you know, before you leave the house, just let the animals know where you're going. I'm coming back in a couple hours. i got to run some errands. It's like having an active relationship. You know, you wouldn't walk out the door and not tell your wife or your kids where you're going. It's the same thing. Um, so I just tell people, you know, just let them know where you're going and how long you're going to be away. And um, it makes your relationship with them a little bit small, uh, a little bit, you know, stronger. Um, and it's, you know, it's also, you know, for want of a better way of saying it, it's really just common courtesy. Well, you know? I agree. And, I, you know, I treat uh, Cruiser just like a family member. And uh, he is a family. He is a family right. member. Right. Yes. And, absolutely. Uh, very important. You know, I always say, if my dog doesn't like you, uh, I'm probably not either. They're great judges <laughs> of character. Uh, I had a dog one time named Ranger, and I'm, maybe I shouldn't mention this uh, uh, on mm-hmm. the air here, but uh, I was at a barbecue, and there was a big circle of people sitting around a circle eating, and I took a, my dog Ranger, who was with me at the time. Uh, and was walking around speaking to people at this function, and there were two guys sitting there that I just cannot personally stand. I'm sorry, I try to like everyone, but these two guys, uh, if I've, you know, if, if, if of all the people there that I did not like, it was these two people. They were sitting side by side in this circle. When I got to them, Ranger hiked his leg up. And, uh, started letting it fly there, and they were both wearing shorts. He got both of them. And, uh, you know, I was saying, Ranger, Ranger, what is wrong with you? And walking away, I was going, good boy, good boy. But they are excellent, <laughs> excellent, excellent judges uh-huh. of character. Uh, if you'd like to call in and speak to Coriel, let her connect with your pet, you can do so. The number is 704-246-3460, and we'd love to take your call. Coriel, um... One mm-hmm. thing that was funny, when I first started uh, 
sending you files uh, several months ago, my audio files, about what I do uh, and playing examples. One thing that, that you said just um, struck me, uh, a chord with me. You said, wow, these voices I hear in my head are real. <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> yeah. Uh, that was... Uh, Pretty yeah. good validation for both of us, I think. The real realization to you that what he's recording, or yes, very similar to the, I don't know how you get your information if you hear the voices or if they're thoughts or if you see pictures or visions, uh -huh. but uh, uh -huh. your statement to me, and it just blew me away. <laughs> you said, wow, yeah. those voices yeah. I hear are real. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's wild because I think... Um, before I started doing investigations, and I've only been doing them a little bit, but, um, you know, I'm not a professional, you know, I've not been a seasoned professional by any long shot, but, you know, it was like hearing them, um, it, it, it just made it more real, because even though I've been doing this for years, um, to, to hear those voices, to, to literally hear them on, on tape and to be able to say, wow, you know, it's like, I, I don't know how to describe it. It brings something that is, um, it brings something that's in your mind into a more tactile um, situation. It, it really just was like, wow, you know, it really just, it, even though I've been doing it for years, my, my mind still told me, wow, I'm, I'm not making all this up. <laughs> <laughs> No, even though like, you know you know what you you know what you know and you know what you're hearing, um, and I think that's great because one thing I always search for and what I do is validation. Um, mm. When they're saying my name, when they're answering a direct question with the correct answer, those are little validations. When they tell me something about someone and I call the person up and yeah. I'm saying, "Hey, what are you doing today?" Oh, wait a minute, let me tell you, you're and I'm right. Those are just little validations uh, mm -hmm. for me. And a lot of mediums um, feel, I don't know, somehow threatened by what I do. They're like, uh, I don't need any validation. And I'm like, mm -hmm. well, no, that's not why I'm doing this. Um, I, but I think we can validate each other. Uh, for yeah. example, uh, you know, I was on a case on an investigation in a very, very old house. Um, and... A lady was with me, and she's very psychic, and she got the name of Sadie. So when I was doing a radio session, I asked who's Sadie, and I got reply, Cindy's aunt. And I said, okay, well, there's Sadie. So they gave me a response, Cindy's aunt. I said, who's giving me information? They said, Ann. So um, I called the homeowner the next day, and I said, i got three names going to run by you, Sadie. Uh, who's that? She said, oh, well, that's uh, that's my great aunt. I said, who's Wow. Who's Cindy? She said, well, Cindy's my mother. I said, so uh, Sadie would be your great aunt and Cindy's aunt. She said, yeah, that's right. And I said, who's Ann? She said, Ann was my great grandmother. Mm. So there's three names, and that, to me, defies the wow. possibility of randomness. <laughs> yes. Uh, but enough about yeah. that, guys. If you'd like to call in, talk to Corey L. Kramer. Uh, and she can connect with your pet or maybe give you a reading, um, just a question you may have. We'd love to take your call. Again, the number seven zero four two four six three four six zero. 704 Now, Coriel, I know you've been doing uh, a lot of events because I follow you on Facebook. Uh, yeah. You're doing everything yeah. from, from psychic dinner parties to animal rescues, and I just think it's wonderful uh, Thank what you. you're doing to help animals. Now, I know... Uh, that we do have a call coming in. Let's see if we can uh, okay. get our next caller. Mr. Frank Fudge, you're live on Alternative Frequencies. Ah, good evening, Stephen. How you doing? Oh, I'm doing great, Frank. Uh, thanks for calling in. How are you this evening? Oh, fair to partly cloudy. Fair to partly cloudy. Well, that's about the best we can hope for uh, here on a Tuesday night. Uh, <laughs> you have a question, Frank, for Coriel Kramer. I, I do indeed. Uh, hello, Coriel. Um, we've recently had um, one of the four-legged members of our household pass away. I'm sorry. Oh. 
And it's never easy. No, no we, he was been with us, he'd been with us for, wow, uh, let me think, let's see, Shotzi's 12, we got That's him awesome. a year later and he was full grown, so, uh, you know, we probably had him for 14, 15 years. Okay. Oh, well, he's 14, 15 years old, and he passed away. What's his name? Jack. Jack. Okay. Jack. Okay. Um, okay, now Shotzi, let me ask you, is Shotzi a dachshund? No. Shotzi's okay. A, uh, but Shotzi's... Okay, is Shotzi... Okay, this is what I'm getting. I'm getting Jack is was bigger than Shotzi. Mm, yeah, he's still taller at the shoulder. Okay. Um, but here's the thing. Um, I feel like Jack was bigger than Shotzi, but um, Jack was kind of like he had um, he he had the demeanor of a, a smaller dog. Do you know what I'm saying? I don't mean like one of those yippy dogs. I just mean that he was he was more of a lappy kind of dog when he shouldn't have been a lappy kind of dog. Do you get what I'm saying? Um, he he was well, actually he, that. I yeah. didn't describe Jack. Uh, I, I will. I will tell you. Jack was a Chihuahua, but he was one of these little really? tiny happy dogs. Okay. Uh, the uh, Shotzi is a Jack Russell. Okay. The thing that I'm getting with Jack, the reason that I'm I'm, I'm queuing into this because I have to say because it's happening for a reason is that I get that it, it feels to me, and even though I know that they're they're both kind of like the same height. But um, Jack is is coming into me like he was bigger, which I think is also kind of like his, uh, maybe his, um, how do I say it, his uh, his soul, his power, his, he was a little bit bigger dog, but he was a little bit more of a, excuse my my wording, but he was a little bit more of a wussy, wussy (laughs) than than Shotzi. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So, um... Now, hang on a second. Can I ask you, did Jack die suddenly? Because it feels like it was not like this long, drawn-out thing. It feels like it was kind of like happy, happy, bye-bye. Jack had been ill for a very long time. Okay, but was he in... uh, The reason I'm asking is is that because it does feel like it was like... It it wasn't like this long, drawn-out... Thing was he kind of like making a, a comeback a little bit? No. Okay. All right. But he did die suddenly. Okay. Um, can I ask you? Was it of the same thing that he was he was ill with? No. Ah. Okay. All right. Um, because it didn't feel like it was the, the reason that I'm saying is is that it didn't feel like it was um, it was the same energy, so to speak. So. What would you like me to find out from Jack or just say to him? Is there anything you'd like me to find out? Well, or tell him? Uh, we do, Jack, Jack was actually the bosom companion of uh, my wife's ex husband. Okay. And okay. They, yes, they live in our household. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, Jack, you know, Shotzi has had a horrible depression ever since then. Okay. She's finally getting around to eating again. Good. Uh, our other, our other chihuahua. Uh, he, the, yeah, she's getting better. Yeah, the the other chihuahua though, it feels like um, Shotzi doesn't. Um, it doesn't mean that uh, he doesn't love her. It's just like that he doesn't kind of acknowledge her as much as he does Jack. Do you understand what I'm saying? It feels like these two were like, you know, kind of like uh, the Dean Martin and and Jerry Lewis kind of of, of dogs. Yeah, we 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 had both of them for about twelve years. Oh, okay. Now that now the other Chihuahua we have, um, she's a special case. She was a rescue. Gotcha. And, gotcha. Okay. But uh, yeah, Jack, Shotzi and Jack were. Very much companions for a very long time. Yeah. Um, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. I don't mean to interrupt you, Frank. Go ahead. Just stuff is coming in. 
<clears throat> let me uh, uh, you know absolutely Jack, I will. Jack we we miss Jack we do uh, he was getting cl- he was getting close to 17 18 years old well yeah impressive and, well Shotzi Shotzi is uh, is 13 yeah you know and you know we figured he was probably th- three or four when when we acquired him Okay. You know, the dog the dog next door was in heat and he wouldn't go away. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, let me just tell you what I'm getting so that you know, Please. okay? Um the reason that it's Okay, hang on one second, I'm just getting stuff. The reason that it's so hard for Shotzi is and I know that there's no way to confirm this, you, it just has to feel right to you. Um but um, Shotzi and, and Jack kind of like made an agreement that when they would they would come down, they would be together, they would hang out, and then they would continue. If one pet, if one transitioned, the other one would come back in spirit until that one transitioned. Do you understand what I'm saying? I understand completely. Okay. So what's happening though is this: um, it feels to me. And correct me if I'm wrong, but it feels to me like for you, it feels like Jack has gone. And what I mean by that is he's packed his little bags, put his little hat on, uh, walked out the door, and tootled off. Um, I'll actually no. Okay. <laughs> we, 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 know, we, no, we, know, we know he's here. <laughs> okay, because... I gotta say, the reason that, the, okay, this is what I'm saying. The reason that Shotzi has been going through the morning that he's been going through is because he doesn't feel or see Jack like he wanted to. That's right. what he's telling me anyway. It, it's like, it feels like he's almost kind of like, um, he's just made his peace with the fact that Jack is, is, is gone. I mean, really gone because He's he's telling me that it's that whatever you're seeing or you're thinking you're seeing is not quite Jack. Jack has packed his little bags and he's gone back to non physical and he's already back in another body already. I know this makes a little weird sense, but let me ask you because it feels like I need to ask you this question: What is it that you think your 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 feeling is Jack? I'm not sure what you mean. What your what you okay. mean? What your question what, is? What makes you feel like Jack is still around? Oh, other well, than the fact that we see him laying on uh, laying on the old man's bed. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. I don't know. There's just something that it. I, I mean, I'm not disputing it. I'm absolutely not disputing it. Of I'm just telling you what I'm getting. Of and, and and for Shotzi, it's it's not. It's almost to the fact like um, what I want to say is maybe it's almost to the fact of maybe he just doesn't want to look. You know, maybe he just looking at at that spirit that you guys see that you pull joy from is too painful for him so hang on a second let me just talk to him for a second so Shotzi I understand that okay but you know it's also the fact that maybe being able to see Jack a little bit even though he's not in his physical body will help you a little bit because you'll feel a little bit more better okay you won't feel as as miserable because you'll see him um, the way he, he wants to be. And I keep seeing him maybe at the age of maybe three or four at the most. So he's in his prime right now. So um, I think maybe that might make you feel a little bit better. Okay, Shotzi? Okay. It, it's just hard for him to look. He, he just, he would rather, he says, I would rather just think of him as being gone. It's kind of hard for him to look at the spirit. Is he showing signs that he sees Jack? Um, no, not really. Yeah. Um, it's just painful for him right now, and I think, um, and, and Jack is kind of like, um, you know, I mean, Jack just, he, he kind of like, he gives him his space. He doesn't want to force, you know, his spirit down his throat, so to speak, but he does have a hard time with, with seeing it. It's painful. for, And which is weird is, is that because usually animals don't have that, there is no death for animals, but there was such a profound, um, and again, without doing a longer session, but it feels like there was a, a profound uh-huh. uh, contract between Shotzi and Jack. 
Um, so what I mean by that is is that they've been doing this for lifetime on top of lifetime. Okay, sorry, so... My wife's telling me something. One moment. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Shotzi, uh, uh, she's, uh, she's laying... We've rearranged our, our living room since, since Jack passed, but right now Shotzi's laying exactly where he used to hang out on the floor. Yeah. The physical for Shotzi is really, um, important, and that's what she's, or Shotzi is a he or she? She. She. Shotzi is, um, that's what she's, she's focused on right now, is the missing of the physical, which is very much human-like. You know, usually animals have a much easier time with letting the physical go. She's having a little bit more of a difficult time with it. Okay, but I feel like, as you said, it feels like she's making her peace with it. It's just like she might have a few more, uh, you know, a little while longer to get through it, maybe a few weeks or so, and then she'll pop right back. Right. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. Did that help answer your well, question? Yeah, yeah, it did. Uh, you know, we we know we know he's around, and I know Chauncey's getting getting over it. Um, I'm just wondering, mm -hmm. really, if, if if Jack would like us to tell uh, to tell Mooney anything. Mooney or Moody? Mooney. Mooney. No, okay. His last name is Moon. Okay. Hang on. Mooney. hang on one second. Um, okay. God, I hope Mooney is a dog. Um, I hope Mooney is a dog. Mooney is, is the old man. Okay. Um, he's, he's, he's Lane's ex. Yes. Um... There's, there, okay, the reason that I said I hope that Mooney's a dog is because there's, there's something that, uh, uh, Jack is focused on a toy. Um, and it's a toy that he wants Mooney to have. And I don't know why it looks like, if I'm looking at it, and again, I'm going by a dog's perspective, so bear with me, please. But it, it's like a, um, it, it's either a, it looks like a figure, so it's a, a stuffed animal kind of like thing or a stuffed figure. And I keep getting the, the color blue with it. It's, it's something that, um, did y'all put like Jack's, um, uh, you know, like Jack's, uh, toys away or is there some toys that are missing? I don't, I don't know. Okay. Um, I think that this toy might be missing. It might be underneath somebody's bed or underneath a, a, a dresser somewhere. But there's this this toy that he would like uh, Mooney to have because it's something that um, is going to make him feel better and um, he he want and make him feel close. He wants to let him know he's absolutely right there close to him. And if he has this toy for him for the gentleman, it's going to make him it feel even more so for him because they also had a profound connection as well. Oh man, we know that. Uh, well, right. I guess we'll, have to find, we'll have to track down. I actually, I think I just realized which toy it is. All right. <laughs> <laughs> but if he has that, it, it's going to be a way for him when he sees it. He's going to not only is he going to be able to see, but get this feeling like like Jack is right with him. Like all of a sudden you'll feel him up on the bed or or laying on his chest if he's so laying beside him on the on the on the bed or something like that but oh, great great so you know what i'm talking about good yeah awesome oh yeah well look, i know animals i know this uh from observation um they do grieve um yes i don't know if you can hear cruiser he just kind of groaned in the background he was agreeable i heard him and, uh, <laughs> they do grieve because when we lost ranger uh, cruiser wouldn't eat and, uh, for several days. And, you know, we've got a cat now, Kenzie, and I know that Kenzie and Cruiser lay down about every night around eight o'clock and give each other a bath, clean each other's <laughs> ears. And, uh, you know, I can't look into the, the eyes of a dog and, um, and, it, and believe that they do not have a soul. And I've asked those on the mm. other side, are there dogs? 
in your realm? And uh, the reply was yes. And once yes. a female told me, she said, yes, they chased the fox. So uh, <laughs> I thought that was yep. uh, pretty cool. And, Frank, we appreciate your call. No and, problem. Uh, Thanks for the information, Carl. You have a good night, okay? You too, Frank. God bless. Steve, you're sounding good tonight. All right, man. Thank you. Yeah, I think quitting smoking uh, definitely is giving me my radio voice back. Well, we'll see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it's, that's in my past now. So Okay. Uh, five days in, I hadn't killed anybody. Um, so, you know, I think we're doing better than we like expected. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> I come with Okay, thank you, Frank. You're welcome. Good night, guys. Good night. Good night. Well, Coriel, uh, great call there. I know animals do grieve uh, just like people do. And, um, you know, I just often, uh, like Tabby's question, you know, what do I tell my cats? They'll know I'm, you know, your advice to her was tell them that you'll be back and that you might bring somebody home with you. And I know that um, I've, been in the cemetery, I've turned around and said, in the name of Jesus Christ and all things good, don't follow me home. <laughs> and it does right. absolutely well, no good. <laughs> it does no good if they attach to your energy, they're attached to your energy. And usually they get bored and hang around. And we only have a couple minutes left, but I wanted to ask you. Uh, mm-hmm. Cruiser's been climbed up under my desk here about every spare minute for the last three days. you see anything? Um, I hope it's not another... Um, wayward hound that's attached to him but uh i was just wondering if you saw anything maybe it's one of my attachments has been giving him a hard time but he's definitely under this desk for a reason um Um, it, it feels to me like it's a woman maybe teenager maybe 13 14 years old girl long hair blonde dirty blonde hair um, she just wants to be around him. She loves dogs. She was a dog person herself. Actually, hang on a second, that's not true. She never had a dog. They never let her have any animals in her house. So she's fascinated by Cruiser and his energy, uh, being your familiar. And yes, I'm using the word familiar. Uh, again, um, she just wants to, she wants him to play. She wants him to play with her. Hang on one second. Okay, sure. if Cruiser, let me just talk to her for a second. If Cruiser, honey, I know that you want him to play, okay? I understand that. Um, maybe if he wouldn't try so hard, okay, maybe, you know, just tossing a stick or maybe a little ball or something like that. Maybe if you just let him come to you and stop going to him, um, he'll feel better. He'll feel more comfortable. Okay. All right. Well, that's great. So, yeah. So she's gonna she's gonna back off a little bit, but she's just drawn to his energy like that. So, uh, yeah, she's just you know she's come here, doggy, come here, doggy, come here, doggy, and he's like, no, you really have to leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's he's uh, eight and a half years old, and uh, you know, like he found out yesterday when I took him to visit uh, Riley, his uh, little god sister. Um, that I raised from a ball of furs. My son and his wife's uh, dog, who's a, uh, I call her a horse. Uh, but um, she found out real quick, Cruiser's not interested in playing. Cruiser's interested in long naps and uh, cheeseburgers is what Cruiser right. likes. But right. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll, I'll have to I'll have to talk to the little girl, and, and, and they surround us all the time, you know, that Coriel. But I just feel like yeah. sometimes... Uh, and what I do, I'm just inviting them in here, and and I, I've even recorded them saying, you know, saying his name, talking about him. I talk about cats, yeah. Uh, so I know these animals exist in the afterlife, and uh, you right. know, I think they it's do. amazing. Go, everybody goes to the same place. I think it's amazing that uh, you have the gift of uh, communicating with them, and thank you. Uh, I'm trying to learn and. Uh, Thank you again. You've been a great guest. We are out of time. Uh, hang on the line here with me. I want to thank you properly for coming on. Sure. Thank and, you for uh, having me. Oh, it's been my extreme pleasure. Guys, that was Coriel Kramer, psychic medium, animal communicator. And Coriel, real quick, tell them how they can get hold of you. Uh, they can get a hold of me by going to my website, which is CorielKramer.com. 
or finding me on Facebook, which is under Coriel Kramer and Coriel Kramer Psychic and Animal Communicator. And um, I try to make it as easy for people as I possibly can. Wow. Um, and she does a great job, folks. Uh, she's helped me out. She's helped out Cruiser. I mm-hmm. highly recommend her. And, guys, uh, thanks for tuning in. Thanks to everyone in the chat room. Thanks to everyone across the pond in Birmingham City Radio UK and, of course, here in the States with the Hazy Radio Network. Well, this has been Alternative Frequencies. If you'd like to sponsor the show by advertising your service or event, contact Stalton4 at gmail.com. That's S T A L L T U R N. Four at gmail.com. Until next week, good night.